Well, I think they did it, guys. I honestly think that players might have finally figured out the perfect comp. Something that quite legitimately might be impossible to beat, but that is merely my opinion, and I want to make sure that, with me going to this video, you are aware of that. While I'm going to be elaborating on thoughts and opinions, trying to analyze why this comp seems as strong as it is, at the end of the day, I'm just your average Joe. I try hard my way into Masters over quite a lengthy course of time, I've never been a top 500 player or even touched Grandmaster. Some people might think that this makes my opinion less valid as analytic content should come from the best of the best, which is a fair argument to make. Others might think it makes it more valid because it more closely resembles the experience of the average player. While we can all appreciate the knowledge coming from top players, at the end of the day, the majority of us will never face a lot of the scenarios they talk about. While this discussion is mainly directed at the higher end of Masters and lower Grandmaster area, I still feel like this is far more realistically attainable than the spot in the top 500. Honestly, I'm kind of in a grey area here right now because according to Blizzard, my rank makes up the top 3% of the ranked population, which as well is pretty niche. But to me, from my experience, it doesn't feel like it's that difficult to obtain if you have your mindset to wanting to improve and have time to spare and do that. I'm not gonna be able to please either extreme end of the spectrum, so just take this as an opinionated piece of content and have some fun with it. Now with that out of the way, let's get right into it. So I guess the best way to start this would be to establish what kind of comp I'm talking about. And as the title of this video gracefully gave away, it's the dive comp. But how come that this particular style of composition is suddenly considered virtually unbeatable, and if it's so strong, why isn't everyone running it? Well, I'm talking about a very specific kind of dive comp that includes Tracer, Genji, Winston, Farah, Mercy, and either Zenyatta, Lucio, or Anna. Now, when you just hear this on paper, there might be a lot of room for argument. What about triple hit scan with McCree, Soldier, and Anna to deal with the pharmacy combo? Well, as simple as it might seem on paper, I genuinely believe that a comp that can defend against this currently does not exist. You see, the problem with all these counters is that they're not going to be able to do their job because they will be overwhelmed. Once Winston, Genji and Tracer jump onto the hit scans along with Winston's barrier being dropped there, there is no way in hell that Soldier or McCree can deal with the Farah. They will be taking disgusting amounts of damage, Winston diving will mess up their positioning and aim and his barrier will block bullets from ever reaching Farah. And even if they could land a few shots, the damage fall off and pocket mercy make sure that she never goes down. I hope that you can try and envision this. Three flankers up in your face while Farah's getting free shots on you, add something like a discord orb on your supports or a speed boost to chase your team down and you got one hell of a problem in front of you. Really, if you think about it, the entire point of this comp is to make sure that the enemies cannot focus on Farah because she does a retarded amount of damage even if she does not land direct hits. Add a mercy damage boost to it and you'll want to smash your keyboard into pieces. Widowmaker, Soldier, Mikri, Anna, Zenyatta, anything that could remotely help in dealing with this problem is easily shut down by this comp and it is my belief that the only way to beat this comp is by praying to our lord and savior Jeff Kaplan that they misplay. But let's come to the more striking questions. If it's that strong, why doesn't everyone run it? Well, because it stands quite contrary to the previous tank meta, where in season 3 we had been graced with a meta that required very little individual impact and relied almost solely on team fights. Executing this kind of dive comp requires the entire team to know their roles and to play them well. Not to mention the level of coordination required to make sure your flankers don't just die one by one. While you might not see this exact comp in front of you every time you queue up, you might have stumbled upon variations of it as of late. The point being pretty much the same, diving into your team, breaking up the front line and creating space for Farah. I've been spending a good bit of time playing on my main around 3.8k and had to face this comp shockingly often. Not only that, but I also participated in creating this comp quite often. The scary thing about it is that while you might think it works best on King of the Hill or Payload Attack, it is just as viable on 2CP defense and pretty much anywhere else if played properly. I watched a few streamers play who are considerably higher ranked than me and again saw this comp pop up quite often. Which comes to nobody's surprise given that the higher the rating, the more skilled you expect the players to be. And I decided to try this out for myself on my old account which is currently at around 3.4k in diamond. I have been picking up Winston a bunch and even played a bit of Tracer to try and create this comp and it has worked shockingly well again. If you know what you're doing in terms of timing for your engagement, coordination with your team and positioning, you can absolutely devastate even when you, just like me, rarely ever touch those heroes. Now I personally feel like this is kind of broken. When it comes down to the core, the problem of this meta so to speak, it is Farah. Just like we saw the D.Va and Anna nerfs in Season 3 because those were the heroes that enabled this problem to occur in the first place, this time around it is Farah. So how do you fix it. Well, I think it should come to nobody's surprise that I think a comp that is virtually unbeatable should not exist. So where is the fix? I think the main problem is that Farah can stay in the sky indefinitely. She does a metric truckload of damage, doesn't even need to hit direct rockets, and is not even required to 
ever touch the ground. So the most obvious fix, a band-aid so to speak, would be to tone her jetpack back down a bit and to reduce her splash damage, meaning that the Farah player in question actually needs to show some resemblance of skill by using her abilities and feel thoughtfully and by actually landing direct rockets. You wouldn't count a shot from McCree that misses the enemy head by 3 feet as half a headshot either, so it really just seems fair to me. Not to mention that we have the old problem of needing very specific, high mechanical skill with very specific heroes to shut Farah down. It isn't as easy as to just pick up her counter like you get a Reaper for Winston that causes you trouble for example. You actually need quite a high level of precision, even more so if she's being pocketed by a Mercy. Variations using Zarya to keep her alive have also been proven to be very difficult to shut down even when having two or three hit scan heroes on your team. You might say that it's all a matter of skill and a good McCree can single handedly deal with the Farah easily. However, what you ignore in that argument is that this is not a 1v1. The enemy team will go out of the way to mess with your hit scan heroes to make sure you can't just shut her down. If you take the mechanical skill required to be effective as McCree and compare that to the mechanical skill required to be effective as Farah, they are worlds apart. Even a good McCree will have trouble shutting a bad Farah down if the enemies build their comp around her. And having to alter your team comp to running as many hit scan heroes as possible to shut down one sub power player seems broken to me from a design perspective. And don't even get me started on actually good Farah players that are being pocketed. The level of effectiveness this hero brings to the table with as little effort as is present in most games is ridiculous. What's worth mentioning is that all this is kind of like the discussion of which rank do you deserve. Players are quick to jump into a conclusion and determine that other players do not deserve to share their rating because they're garbage or whatever. They are also quick to jump into the idea of elo hell because they had bad luck with people trolling, all these sorts of things. So is it possible that all this has just been bad luck on my part? Is it possible that it is coincidence that I ran into this comp very frequently? That I've been lucky on my old account and played against people who didn't know how to deal with a subpar Winston or Tracer? That every single time I tuned into a stream to see them deal with a dive comp was only those few games that had them play against this whereas the entire rest of the day they did not encounter it? Yes, it is very well possible. Some of you might even say that you never encountered a dive comp in the entirety of you playing this season. And with millions upon millions of people playing this game, Game, there is a good chance that this is the case. So at the end of the day, this is not me saying that we have a massive problem at hand that needs fixing right now like we did with the tank meta. And what makes me think even more that this is not an urgent problem is that I haven't seen anyone else talk about this. You'd think that a comp that is so strong would become very popular very quickly and make it into the next clickbait YouTube video of your favorite content creator, like this one. But this simply didn't seem to have happened, at least not to my knowledge, so this is where you guys can throw in your experience. What rating are you currently playing in? Have you been playing frequently this season and what are the most popular comps that you have encountered? I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comment section below, but this is me done for the day as I talk about dive comps, their potential to become very popular in the current meta as also their potential to become a big problem. As always, if you enjoyed this video, do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out, subscribe if you want to see more, and I hope to see you all next time. After that YouTuber man, what? I'm I'm sure you I recognized your sexy ass voice. <laughs> That's funny. Is that Pe is that PewDiePie? Is that, Pe is that the real PewDiePie? Do I look like Corbin <laughs> to you? <laughs>